Hey y'all, I'm Todd Bailey. What's up? It's Ari Lumberdozy. And this is fucking brutal. Get in the pit, stock up the fridge, and listen. We're here to cover the latest in metal news and craft beer. A match made in hell. If it makes you bang your head, then we want to hear it. If it tickles your taste buds, share those suds. Turn it up to 11. Crack open that beer. It's about to get brutal. What's up, Pop Wolves? There's your boys, Todd and Ari, coming at you with another episode of Brutal Podcast. Uh, it's a special one today. We have a few members of the band Sunmancer here. Uh, guys, welcome. Really glad to have y'all on. What's up, man? Thanks for having us. Normally, we usually have one, but we have three, and that's awesome. Uh, if you don't mind just going around saying your names and introducing yourself. I'll go first because I'm the coolest. Um, <laughs> nice. My name's Dan. <laughs> I'm the bass player. Everybody cares about the bass player the most, obviously. Oh, yeah. Happy to be here. Glad to be in Sunmancer. These guys are like medium friends of mine, so I'll let, I'll let them go. Uh, I'm Jeremy. I'm the guitar player for Sunmancer. And I'm Kyle. I am also a guitar player for Sunmancer. And Dan is the okayest bass player I've ever known. <laughs> Thank Truly you. the highest compliment. <laughs> yes. That's high praise, dude. <laughs> i love it uh guys back in december y'all released an ep uh that ari had on one of his uh top lists uh and he really turned me on yeah. y'all talk a little bit about that um and how i uh was listening to another podcast in preparation for this and that actually took like six months to put together and be released is that correct i think even shorter than that so wow. jeremy and i kind of equally contributed to writing songs but I had the, the, the parts that I contributed, I had written like years before and was just kind of sitting on them. A, a drummer we know uh, was bugging me while I was on my honeymoon and was like, hey, I know this guitar player. I really think that you should be in a band again because I've been playing bands in like, I don't know, 15 years. And uh, he was relentless. So I finally gave in. I was like, yeah, sure. You know, here's some of my stuff. Like, I'll meet him. And it was Jeremy. And the uh, guy sent him some of my material and Jeremy get, was into it. And we started the band with, uh, with my brother, the vocalist and uh, the drummer kind of fell off the face of the earth, but the three of us continued and we kind of formed in September, 2022. And then we were recorded in November, 2022. And so all six songs in between that time were written. So what, how many months is that? Like four months. And uh, yeah. the EP but we sat on that EP for a while, right, Jeremy? Yeah, we yeah. We actually, started. we actually started writing all that stuff in like, I, I think it was like July or August. But um, yeah, a lot of it was, uh, or I'd say like probably half of the EP was material that Kyle had already written, that kind of just wasn't uh, fully polished and everything. So we kind of, uh, at, you know, changed things around, added transitions, leads, all that stuff, and uh, and then. I I wrote two more songs for it. And then he had another like half of a song sitting there. So I was like, all right, give me that. Let me see if I can do something with that. That actually ended up being uh, the song Descender. That's on our EP. Um, that's my personal and, favorite. Yeah. And that's, that's like the first one that I feel like uh, Kyle and I really collaborated on, which is cool. And uh, we've gotten a lot of good feedback from that one. And, but yeah, and then we went into the studio and like around Thanksgiving of that year. Um, and then we sat on it for a year. We spent the whole next year trying to, you know, get the full band together. Cause when we went in, it was just me, Kyle and, and our vocalist, Justin, and uh, the guy who produces Patrick Snyder, he ended up doing the drums for us and just saved our ass last minute uh, and absolutely knocked it out of the park. But then we had to go out and find a guy who could play his shit, which is a lot harder than it sounds, you know? Um, and then we also hired Dan and started working with him. So this whole last year has just been, getting them ready to uh play all these songs on stage and uh, yeah that's pretty much how it all came together that's awesome well i want to do a cheers to him and this will be a nice little segue to uh see what everyone's drinking here on brutal podcast we talk about beer and metal uh so if y'all want to go around uh, tell us what you're drinking and we'll get this thing going with uh some liquid 
All right, I'll start because Dan sucks. So <laughs> <laughs> you just said he was the okay is. <laughs> I got, I'm drinking Blue Moon and my Fireball Robitussin. Nice, Love it. beautiful. Some well, citrus, citrus, I, some... call it out. I got a uh, I got a donkey dick of fucking Michelob Ultra and uh, some Eagle Rare here, uh, ten year. Oh, so that'll be my nice shot off. when you boys are ready. I know. I feel like nice. y'all are up in each other right now. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm about to really up it. I got the ice cold Miller Light, and I even got the uh, the lame country music lyrics on there. Uh, beer, beer never broke my heart. But the best I mean, thing that's I have here is that's, that's really yeah, that's yeah, well, it's it's true. Talking, yeah, bro. that's why I had to buy it. But um, also, I have this koozie here. I don't know how well you can see it. It's actually our bass player Dan and his buddy at the gathering of the Juggalos. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Koozie, so it's my favorite beer drinking koozie. I made sure I had it. Today. Oh, dude, I'm glad you saved that, dude. <laughs> no, dude, I, I, mean, drink, I use this thing all the that's time. That's incredible. That was my birthday present from my girlfriend taking me to the <laughs> gathering of the jugglers. I was like, uh, all right, let's let's give it a go. <laughs> dude, we, so, we were just talking. Yes. We, the last interview we had is our friend Adam. He's he works at a brewery. I'm I'm live in Pittsburgh right now. And he was just telling us about like going to the gathering of the jugglos. I feel like I've never actually met anyone that's gone. So now we have two people in the span of two episodes. So, Incredible. So my birthday present was the VIP alien hayride experience. <laughs> I love and the sound I'm of that. You, it may have been the funniest, weirdest stuff I've ever seen in my life. Like I saw people get probed by uh, spears of dildos with, you know, <laughs> freaking fireworks going off in the middle of the night. Like, I, I don't think I've ever laughed that hard, to be honest with you. We've, we've heard about the fireworks. They like throw it at your feet and everything. Oh, yeah, it was it was something to be experienced. Um, I've got some videos and some pictures that you'll probably be interested to see after this. <laughs> Amazing. I can't wait. What, what was your uh, Fago to whip it ratio during this? So I got on stage and I was launching. I probably launched about 30 of the two liters, <laughs> dude. And I was killing it. <laughs> nice. I, I'm basically a celebrity now. So I thought nice. I recognized you when you popped on. <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah, Fago? You're, you're, missing, you're missing his clown makeup, dude. I was just, I'm a little disappointed that he doesn't have Fago right now. So if if yeah. you look at that closely, the funniest thing I thought I did was I painted sunglasses on my face. Like, <laughs> not the real. Nah. <laughs> Dude, you hear me? You hear me? Show that one. Which... You see it? I thought that was hilarious. Wow. Just, I love it. I yeah, honestly I, never noticed that until you said that, dude. Everybody's like, dude. Those aren't shades. I'd open my eyes. They'd be like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so that was right after the butt clapping competition that I went to. Uh, <laughs> nice. What, so, when was this? Like, what, what year are we talking about gathering of the juggles? It was like six months ago. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so you're still sticky from it is what you're saying. Uh, this was, uh, this <laughs> was July, <laughs> July of 23. <laughs> that That's nice. actually like. I give you even more respect for that now because I feel like most of the time people are like, yeah, you know, I had a phase like 10, 15 years ago, but not nah, dog. You're going there in in prime time now. Oh, yeah. He's a lifer. Uh, I got after it. <laughs> 37 was a good year, dude. I yeah. better. <laughs> I'm jealous. That's my 38th birthday. Sorry. But I better yeah. hear ICP cover from y'all now. It's expected. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're doing chicken hunt. Like, uh, chicken hunt. <laughs> <laughs> so are you guys all going to have makeup so for this tour? Hear me for even saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are going to use makeup for this whole tour. It's all going to, we're all going to paint sunglasses on our face. Just the sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we look so dumb if we did uh, I mean, like, your band is name is Sunmancer, so like, yeah, yeah dude, Sunglasses Mancer, <laughs> <laughs> shining so bright, we had to paint them on. <laughs> yeah, dude, your glasses glasses and your magnets. Oh, what is that <laughs> song? I, I wear sunglasses. Uh, in what is that at song? Night. Yes, oh. at night. Yeah, dude. We'll cover that one. We're gonna cover chicken hunting. I don't even know if that song's called chicken hunting, but if you've heard ICP, you know what the fuck I'm ICP talking about. Yes. Be like the hardest song to cover ever because it's just like weird rap, you know. Like I truly like yeah. only know Tilt a World just because I remember like Headbangers Ball or something like promoting that song, right? Or yeah. something back in the day. Yeah, I just know it from 
That's the I stuff just know I from my white trash neighborhood I grew up in. <laughs> Dude, where, what, was, what was the wrestling thing they were in? Was it ECW that they were a part of? Probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah, it definitely was. <laughs> yeah. That was another funny thing at the gathering. They had a ninja competition and a wrestling ring that was like the funniest thing I've ever seen. Oh, like, why not? <laughs> There's like girls getting choke slammed by like weird computer <laughs> nerds. Like, I was like, this is the best, best I've ever seen. So, really, what I'm hearing is you guys recruited Dan. Because he went to the gathering of the jugglers. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. yeah, I was on the yeah. fence about him until I until I saw the koozie. <laughs> I was like, all right, now we need to give this guy a shot. Uh, funny yeah, enough, yeah, yeah, Jeremy Jeremy made me send a video of myself before I was allowed to be in the band. That's right. <laughs> well, hey, everybody's gonna do a video audition. Yeah, they yeah. were like, you want to be in the band? I was like, well, I don't play bass, but I'll think about it. And then yeah, the first video, he was even playing bass. That's why we're like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, well, I'm a guitar player, but bass sounds kind of fun. Let me give it a shot. Jeremy's like, video or you're not in. I was like, all right, fine. And then I uh, exposed myself and he let me in. That's right. Yeah. They're it, like, what's with the couch? A classic tale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was a classic impressive. love story. <laughs> No, but for real, uh, so a little bit about Dan is uh, he's he's not he wasn't a bass player like when we got him. He's a guitar player that we know. He's actually a really good guitar player. So giving him this gig, it's like, you know, they're uh, Justin Kyle kind of saying, I'm like, dude, this will be easy for you. And like, we need someone good that we can rely on that's going to be able to play as tight as we are. And he gave it a shot. And now I was just talking to him on the phone, I think yesterday. And I was just like, dude, you have fully committed to this bass player thing and it's really showing so it, it really it's a it's an integral part of our live set and he's crushing it oh yeah. Uh, yeah i enjoy playing with these two guys they're better than i am at guitar so it's fun fun to play bass with them see your oh, ranking yeah, so is going up as we talk so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, he's coming back he's coming back that's awesome so kyle and justin you guys I guess this is like, are you guys all in Atlanta or like in the area? Yeah, Atlanta metropolitan area. Okay. So, but, but we all, so Justin lives in a place called Bishop, which is like almost an hour and a half outside of Atlanta. Dan lives in Cumming, which is mm -hmm. about an hour outside of Atlanta. Jeremy is probably the one who can only, he's like the only one who can say he lives in Atlanta because he lives in Stone Mountain. And then uh, nice. Ram Ramon, the drummer, and I, we live like northwest, like uh, on the way to uh, Chattanooga, like 40 minutes outside of Atlanta. But we stay okay. there because it's, but we all yeah. go to Dan's yeah. house to practice, which is like a hall. So for me, it's like an hour and five minutes to get to his place. Yeah. I mean, that, that's always a, a nice blanket term to, to say that. Like we're, we're both originally from Erie, PA, but like, no yeah. one really knows where that's at. So it's easier just to be like, well, you know, like close to Pittsburgh or something like that, which it's it's right. not really that close, but it's close enough. Uh, right. So so that's cool that you guys can can actually like get together and practice, because I know like a lot of the bands, not always, but like we'll, we'll talk to them that everyone is like remote, but it's like remote, remote, like people from other countries or they're just like one man projects stuff like that and then they have to fly in to to practice so that's cool that you guys have that opportunity to do that and, and also presumably to to write like do you guys write as a band too i know you kind of touched upon that process a little bit in the beginning yeah yeah so what we do right now and it's we're, we're hoping it kind of changes a bit and becomes a bit more organic but really what i what we do now is I'll, I'll have an idea or Jeremy has an idea. And if we're feeling like we want to share, we'll, we'll throw it to the guys or right, I'll throw it to Jeremy and be like, Hey, I've got these ideas. I can't, I don't have a whole song. And then he'll run with it and write something. Or there's cases where I will just write and record an entire song and send it to the guys. I'm like, yeah, this is like 90% of the way done. Let's, let's go ahead and, and, you know, we'll remember this one. And when it comes time to record and we'll finish it, Jeremy will do the same thing. And now Dan's been writing a lot of stuff recently and sending it to us. And it's really good. It's uh, he's kind of, so Jeremy and I are both metalheads and uh, Dan is kind of more of the, I don't know what, like, like kind of like ABBA 
I my think background likes- <laughs> is like boys of the well like melodic hardcore type stuff like so it's different you know so you definitely I'm pick trying, up on I'm that i'm trying to get in on their like writing style but it's been difficult because it's a, a totally different technique Jeremy and I have been sending a bunch of stuff lately, uh, the last couple of weeks, but it's been more like, Hey, here's a chorus that I think you could use, you know, cause that's right up my alley. And then, you know, a couple other things I think maybe might slip in there, but, um, it's, it, it's honestly just a fun challenge trying to, um, kind of write more stylistically to them, but also keep my background, you know? So. Yeah. So I kind of go back. Go to ahead, go what you were talking about, Ari, is uh, what Jeremy, Justin, and I really, you know, agreed on when we started the band is that we didn't want this to be, uh, you know, an internet project where it's like, oh yeah, we write stuff, we're gonna post it online. It's like, no, the end goal is that we play shows, and okay. that's why we we sought out people in Atlanta, and we've known Dan for years. Justin and I have. I've known Dan for what fifteen, probably eighteen 20. years now, Dan. Twenty yeah. years. But yeah, that, that it was a big, a big thing for us is making sure that everyone was at least local enough that we could get together and we can rehearse because I don't know. It's it, I I love playing in a band and 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 being with a, a group of musicians and actually performing together. Yeah, we've yeah, seen the crowd say, and reaction too. I'm assuming. Oh hell yeah, yeah. So that was a big thing that kind of made me interested in playing with them was that when I met Justin and Kyle, it was like, okay, they got a drummer, they got a singer, they have a guitar player, you know, who plays at my level. Uh, they have material that they've already started working on. And it, to me, it was like, okay, I, this is my, this is my chance to get back on stage with a full group. You know, that's always been the whole goal. And we finally, we're finally doing that, which is great. We did our first show uh, a couple of weeks ago and it was, it, Nice. Went went better than than I think any of us really could have imagined. So uh, we got it rolling now. Hell yeah, that's I know, awesome. I know there's a good majority of the band with that has been you know playing music for quite some time. Um, you know, one of y'all's uh, previous bands, uh, Broadcast the Nightmare. We got to put that out there. What, what was that? 2009. That release came out. <laughs> yeah, you know, is it came out in 2009. So Justin and I, being brothers. Uh, We've played in so many different bands together, and that was one of the iterations of our bands. And yeah, after so we couldn't keep members. Uh, the big like problem we would have is people thought that oh, well, I joined a side band, then I'm I'm set. I don't have to do anything. I'm a rock star. I I I don't have to work. And Lol. Like, Dude, like yeah, your work just began. <laughs> Getting like either uh, like five dollar buyouts, so you Taco Bell every night, or or the promoter would do Little Caesars Pizza, and no one would bring money on tour. And Justin and I were kind of seasoned at it, and having members like constantly rotate where they get in, they think that it's one thing, and it it turns out to be something completely different. And a year or so later, they're like, "Dude, I'm out. I can't do it. I can't hang." We had a drummer and bass player quit on us in the middle of a tour. And yeah, that was kind of like the, the straw that broke the camel's back with us. And that was the, we, we kind of, we were on Sumerian records at the time. And when that happened, having to call our booking agent, uh, with, so we were on TKO at the time and, mm-hmm. uh, telling Matt like, Hey man, uh, we got to drop off this tour. So you're not going to get your 10% for all the rest of these shows. And then calling the label, talking to Ash and Sean. And yeah, they were pretty pissed. Like, like upset with us and then we found new members but it wasn't soon enough and we ended up leaving the label uh dropped i guess but yeah after that it was kind of like eh, I, lo- I lost my mojo for it and Justin and i just decided yeah let's just end so we went into kind of hibernation for let's see that was right at the end of 2009 early 2010 and joining with these guys in 2022 so however many years that is 13 years and funny enough, my band actually opened for your last show, which was oh wow, either my, my last show with that band or the second to last one, like just surprisingly, like coincidentally, they're like, hey, y'all want to play? We're like, hell yeah. So honestly, uh, Justin and Kyle, seeing them the first time when I was like 18, 19 is why me and my drummer decided, fuck it, let's do a hardcore band. That's like how we got hell started. Yeah. 
you know, 20 years later, we're playing in a band, you know, that's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty thing, rad. The other thing about that whole era is that I actually auditioned for bass for broadcast nightmare. Uh, <laughs> and they, but they Full broke circle. up right, like right yeah. after that. So Kyle actually saw my email, didn't watch my audition, but I guess at the time he was probably like already out or something. And then, so that never actually materialized. So when I met them, <clears throat> I told them about it and they're like, what are you serious? We never saw that. And uh, Justin actually went and dug it up and it's there. So oh, that could have been a thing. Yeah. So, but you should have gone full frontal like I did, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Damn. And, um, I sort of wanted to, you know, talk about that to segue in. Like, do you feel like, you know, everyone's past experiences are really playing a role now uh, just in the cohesiveness of your unit today? When we first started working together, you know, my my other band, Faith and Ruin, we had already done uh, a big, uh, not big, but we had already done an independent like album release. So I had seen like how you do this and the mistakes that I made and wanting to learn from them. And they hadn't released anything like in the social media era. Um, right. So I kind of like showed them, you know, kind of the layout of, of, of how to do, like what my plan was to do all this. And, and we did it that way. And you kind of forget that they had all this experience because their experience was a with the label and we don't have the label. But when we got on stage the other day or a couple of weeks ago and I was watching the videos and I was looking at Justin and Kyle and I was like, Oh yeah, no, these are those guys that played across the country, played a million shows together. Uh, they look like it. I mean, and it's, it looks completely natural for them. There was no, they weren't trying out anything. These were real live pro musicians. So that definitely, that experience definitely comes into it. And as far as like uh, with Dan, all I've known is like, or what I've noticed is that he knows how to fit into the band. He knows how to, he understands like when we're trying to curate a, a set list or whatever, and when we're writing songs and what we're trying to accomplish live and, and how we can, you know, design a song to kind of pop off uh, live and everything. Uh, so all of that has been, everyone's experiences have come in and, and contributed. Hell yeah. I love to hear it, that. It really like, you can hear it in the project though. And like Todd and I, I mean, we're always talking whenever like we're not recording, but like, you guys do metalcore justice like the, this whole and it's not just metalcore. I'm using that as like a blanket term, but like uh, just okay, heavy, man, we're used to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just like the like the soaring choruses and like but like the really punchy riffs like the band's so tight. And I was listening to broadcast the nightmare and then like going into Sunmancer. And it's mm -hmm. so crazy. Like you can hear like some of the nuances like between the two projects. But this is such a more mature sound which sounds kind of hokey, but like it just is so like well produced. It's so well written. It just sounds fantastic. So yeah, it's, it's I, like thanks, new man. but nostalgic somehow. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. thanks, man. <clears throat> so if you one, one thing that it, that I don't, it, it doesn't upset me, but it makes me laugh as people are like, "Yeah, man, bring back old metalcore." It's like, well, I'm just writing stuff that I like to write. Maybe that's. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'm just old. Maybe I'm just old. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah that metalcore cool. shit was really, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, no, well, all, all the metalcore shit was not really like by design. It was kind of like that's just kind of what the song started to sound like, and um, we both kind of have that yeah, background. All the influences and, coming yeah. together, I think. Yeah, and and some of our our newer material already is kind of <clears throat> we're bringing in like other influences and and uh, kind mm -hmm. of open it up a little bit more. I think the metalcore thing was just like a really comfortable spot for us to, to really, you know, make something. So. Well, Jeremy and Kyle both have like a different style that I like that somehow just like fits together really well. When I first heard it, I was like, ah, this is awesome. And then I listened to it more and like, just loved it. You know, I'm like, it's just something that the more you listen to it, the more you like it, you know? And then you hear like their riffing style and how clean they play. I'm like, it's very respectable for me to be like, all right, this is fun to be a part of, to see two guitar players just like kill it. You know, I'm like, this is really fun for me. Oh, yeah. I gotta, I gotta give a shout out to, to Jeremy specifically. Like I, the first, I think it was the, um, I watched the revolver, music video last night and notice that you were playing a dean and then i see like yeah. the razor back on the wall I'm like dude i haven't seen anyone play a dean in like so long but like 
it just like the the whole look of like you guys shredding and like i could see how like you've got your guitar like everyone's got like their guitars and stuff on the back like it just looks cool because like a lot of the times now like you'll see like keysoles or like the headless stocks and like everyone right. kind of like looks the same mm-hmm. but like it doesn't have as much personality and and again like it could be because like i i'm a little bit older as well and like that's the type of shit that i love back in the day so like yeah dude i love like you got like soaring like harmony lead lines and shit like yes dude like where is this been yeah and dude, uh, yeah i love it yeah, yeah, man. Wall. yeah, yeah wall. it's the, beautiful it's beautiful here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, i'm actually missing my main it. guitar yeah i'm missing my main guitar which is another dean uh the black one that you that you've seen in the music videos but uh oh, yeah one sec yeah i, I mean i i grew up a dime bag kid and you know I, when i started got interested in playing guitar you know i was playing you know fucking green day and shit and uh and then eventually metallica and then when i I saw Pantera, like a, a music video for Pantera. I was like, okay, no, I, I think I want to start moving. Like, that's the kind of guitar that's player the I want to be. Yeah, so I, I immediately started, uh, I think when I was like 15, I was just like, begged my parents to buy me, you know, a Dean, and they bought me the cheapest one. I've still got it over here, but oh, uh, cool. like a little $300 Dean. And then I, I upgraded to the, you know, the next, the actual, you know, I guess like the higher quality one. And I've kind of stuck with that guitar forever. And I've, I've tried to kind of try other guitars. And then over here, I also have a, a flying V over here, but this is that style of, of, uh, a body shape of guitar has just become the most comfortable thing for me. Like it, Kyle's got a great guitar and I, and I've, I've, played it a little bit on the record and, and I like playing it, but if I'm going to play ex- like a hundred percent, like myself, I kind of need that shape of guitar at this point. Cause I've used it for so long, you know, so it's something that's not going to go away. Well, I hope with Thank you. the live shows and you using them, I hope you influence someone in the crowd. That's also a guitar player. And it's like, I want to, I want to use that. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. No, that'd be awesome. I got, I got a room of uh, dad rock guitars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But well, Dan has a thousand guitars though, so all dad rock. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Yep, yep. As long as you can play them. Mm-hmm. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> as much as we all want to hear Wonderwall for like the umpteenth million time, dude. Right, right. Just, just just save that. He tries to do it in every practice. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this song I wrote, guys. <laughs> it's like, don't you dare. Shut up, Ramon. I'm trying to play, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's so sick. So you guys talked about having your, your first show as Sun Mancer. Uh, so you have a tour coming up that that we definitely need to talk about with August Burns Red and Fuming Mouth, ain't nothing to sneeze at. That's a stacked lineup. Is this like so? This will be your first tour as a band, but like, what about collectively as like individuals tour wise? Like, would this be the first one in a while? Yeah, absolutely. So I've never done a, a run like this. I've 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 gone and played out of town and shit like that, but. Kyle and Justin with broadcast. I mean, they played, you know, every major city, every little town, all that shit, you know, uh, when they were touring with them and, uh, and being on Samarian and all that. So, uh, I don't know exactly what, what Dan's done show wise, but this is definitely the biggest thing for me. And I would, I would probably go ahead and say that this is probably the biggest thing that any of us have done. Uh, August Burns Reds, we're playing the big clubs, man. Um, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a big jump. So uh, we're extremely lucky, lucky to, to have the opportunity and everything. And, and the dudes in ABR, JB, the guitar player specifically, has been so cool to us. And even thinking about having us on and everything, the, the second he asked us, we were like, yep, we'll do it. You know, we, yes. we weren't even able to yes. confirm with the whole band that we could do it. We were like, yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> so, yeah, we're super stoked on it. So, so they, they reached out to you then, like specifically. Yeah, yeah, they, we were, we, JB had asked Justin and me and it was uh kind of a head scratching moment, but you don't, you don't say no to that. No. And so we, we've been friends with the guys in that band for, yeah, 20 years. So we met them when they were touring in support of, of Drill Seeker and playing, wow. there was a little Damn. tiny, like, a tiny venue in a suburb of Atlanta called Marietta. The venue is called oh, Swayze's. I used to live there. Yeah, do you remember Swayze's? 
No, I, I was stuff. like real small when I lived there. But yeah, so this it was a cool venue, a real tiny like hole in the wall, and but they like the shows they were always so great. Uh, but yeah, we met them there. We got we opened up for them, and I don't know we invited them to stay at the house, and from then on, it's like every time they came to Atlanta, they would come and stay at our apartment, and we just maintained a friendship over all these years. So when when Sunmancer formed, or I'd reached out to JB, I t- I hadn't talked to him in a while, and I was like, hey, you know. Like, how you doing? By the way, here's a plug. Uh, he, you know, he, he was interested. And so it, it is crazy now. I mean, social media was kind of big when we were doing our thing. It was MySpace, mm-hmm. but not nearly as like as like prevalent as like Instagram is now with bands. Like that's really like where you got to go and Spotify. But he was like, yeah, man, I'll, I'll follow you with my personal account and the band's account. And it's really helped us out. And so anytime we post stuff, like they're liking our stuff and it means a lot. Like it, it, it we, we never asked for it. And so when he asked us like, Hey, would some, initially it was, Hey, would Sun Mancer be available to open a show? Uh, okay. The first show on the tour. Uh, and we're like, yeah. And he's like, well, why don't you guys just open all of the shows? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, hell yeah. So yeah, it, it's, uh, I don't know. It, it's a, it, it's a kind of, I'm super grateful that he asked us, but yeah, it's kind of like a, uh, <laughs> you know, like you're waiting yeah. to be like, actually we're like, this was a joke, you know, we're, yeah, are you messing with us, dude? <laughs> yeah. I, I remember texting my wife and be like, Hey, I uh, don't want to say anything just yet, but something really big is about to happen. I'm, I'll let you know about it in a little bit or whatever. And, and then like 30 minutes later, they sent us the flyer. Uh, um, nice. But, Back I in put it on my LinkedIn like instantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but back in like November um, of last year, uh, JB invited us out to their Atlanta show with, that they were headlining and gave us a VIP and all that. And, and we met up with him at a bar before the show and hung out and just really just talked shop with him. And, and he was just kind of asking us like, you know, about the band and what we're doing and kind of like what's coming up next. And, and and just catching up with Justin and Kyle and everything. And, and he was, it was cool hearing him talk about like all the things that ABR is doing and everything. And he had talked about maybe putting us on a show like later on uh, in this year. And he was like, but it can't be your first show. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it won't be. So, so we started booking these uh, little local shows, but before we could even post the first flyer for our first show, he hit us up with this, this little mini tour. So I, I don't really know how that happened. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't know either. we were totally not expecting that to happen. Then we were expecting to maybe do something with them at some point this year, but we thought that we okay. were going to have to do all these other things to kind of show them like, yeah, we are, we are legit. We are ready to go. Everything that he told us was just like, man, everything, everything you guys have put out, like it looks, uh, it looks legitimate. Everything you guys are doing, the sound, the shirt designs, the, yeah. And not to mention, um, so I went with Justin and Kyle and I had never met him before. I didn't know any of these guys. So for me, it was kind of just like a cool experience, but when they came out, uh, on stage to start their set and we're over the VIP section and I'm like, this motherfucker's wearing our shirt. He was wearing <laughs> oh, a Sun cool. Mancer shirt yeah. in front of our hometown crowd, which is, I, which is a sold out crowd, 1500 capacity venue. Um, it was really, really cool. And I, I mean, whenever he got off stage and came up, was talking to us, I just gave him a big hug. I was like, dude, that shit was so fucking cool that you did that. But, Fuck uh, yeah. I mean, he just continues to, to keep doing things like that for us. Um, it, it, again, they, they've been super awesome to us. You know, dude, JB is like consummate professional. Oh, like always. He's <laughs> even keel dude. We're lucky to have him as a friend. So it's like, no you doubt. gotta, like, gotta be grateful for those, like, you know, the, it, it's all on who you know, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, those, those, uh, you gotta, you gotta be grateful for that. You got how many flip flops did it actually take that you gave him? <laughs> <laughs> that's the real question, dude. He's been wearing those, but he's been wearing those flip flops. That's his thing as long as I can remember. I, I can't count to how many ABR shows I've been to. It's been at least twenty over so the it's past all about twenty heat, years. Heat control with the <laughs> let's, right. let's be it's real. He's thing. a, a uh, thong guy. Like, come on, <laughs> <laughs> the, the right. thong guy. Technically, yes, he is. He is publicly He's a thong guy. Cisco of metalcore, dude. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> all, all the dude, all the dudes in the band are are super cool. Actually, JB was. Are you guys familiar with Tabit? 
It's kind of like Guitar Pro, but like a real, mm -hmm. like simplified version. And when I, I used to write music, it was like playing in the bedroom and I would go to another guitar player, like this is what I have. And then we would just rehearse together. And then you, it, the problem was showing that to a drummer. It's like they would only learn the part at rehearsal. And then JB was like, man, you like, dude, I got to show you this. And so he showed me Tabit on his computer, which is you know, you're writing things out. And it sounds like Nintendo music when you play it back. But it allows you to structure the, the songs as well as you can program the drums. That was my first foray into programming drums, at least. And I, I think it my my songwriting went up like through the roof, at least, you know, relative to me. And like I said, I, it, it's my dude. And I, I appreciate his friendship. This makes sense why they do so many MIDI tricks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they've got them all on deck for sure. I, I, I imagine that they have every song already tabbed out. That I'm pretty sure that's just how he likes to how he likes to write. But and I know that the other guys write stuff too. Uh, they got they have three badass guitar players. So you have the two guitar players, Seriously, and then their bass yeah. player is also mm -hmm. he might be the best guitar player in the band. You know. Yeah, Dustin's no slouch, man. He's I think he's better than you and me both, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, no, for real. No, but but not Dan. Really not good. Dan. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Dan. Definitely not Dan. <laughs> not better than Dan. That's for sure. I am pretty good. So. <laughs> no, Dan, Dan is damn good. I, 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 I will not go back on that. He is a good guitar player. Oh, man. That's fucking funny. So, so it sounds like this is going to be like, I mean, the, the tour, okay. I'm sure, is going to be super sick. But like you already have like somewhat of a connection with the band which is gonna make it 10 times better i i can imagine as as two people that have never been on tour we don't know how that works but i would imagine like it's it's easier to tour with like your friends than yeah. it would be yeah so it's super awkward that you it, well it's funny that you say that so the first day of any tour it's <laughs> super awkward for all bands because no one knows each other and it take it usually it's like two or three days into the tour before someone like says something to another band and then everyone becomes Hi. friends. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, Hey man, cool set. It's like, oh, well, it's okay. they Three can't look you in the eye. Yeah. Well, cause it's the, it, it's, I, I think some of it is ego. I think some of it is just awkwardness. Like most people who play in bands, they weren't like, you know, the, the high school homecoming King or they like the, I, I wasn't certainly. So I played music or I played guitar because that was what I, I spent my weeknights doing. And, not socializing shit like that, but yeah, the the first day of every tour, first few days is always super awkward. So with us knowing the guys at August Burns Red, it's like, hey man, like you know, embracing old friends, like giving hugs. Uh, we don't know Fuming Mouth. They seem like really cool dudes, and immediately right off the bat, I'm gonna go and kind of squash that awkwardness and be like, hey, like introduce myself and. Because I like their music. I think they I, I think oh, yeah. they're actually a, a really good band. They got a ton of hype too. People love them and for good reason. They're definitely hitting their stride right now. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. touring with everybody, man. <laughs> like yeah. everybody. And there are those guys, like they are touring constantly. So I just mm -hmm. I that, you know, like cancer bats right right mm -hmm. after us up in Canada. I'm like, that's gonna be fun as hell. Like, oh, just tour with them. Nice. They're gonna play with on Earth. Like it, it, even if I hated their music. I would still have to give them props because like, man, touring life is not, it's not for, it's not for everyone. I wouldn't say it sucks because I got, I have a ton of memories and we're going to make more good memories, but it could be, it's rough, man. Sleeping in a van with, with vinyl seats stick to your skin in the summer heat that that's sad. Or an AC that barely works, or someone's <laughs> eating all someone's eating all your full food out of the cooler. Yeah, that's there's yeah. so many things that can go wrong. Go. Go. Where'd my Mexican pizza? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't know. my fucking burrito. Uh, <laughs> Justin, so Justin likes to pack peanut butter and jelly. That's his thing. He loves peanut my butter man. and jelly. And uh, what? So this is in broadcast. Uh, the drummer Pope. He's kind of like a big caveman. And he had diabetes, but he would never bring his own shit. And so <laughs> we would, <laughs> Dustin would always catch him eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Like, hey, where did you get that? I know you don't have <laughs> bread or peanut butter or jelly. And then Pope would be like, like throw his arms up in there. Man, it's my diabetes, man. <laughs> I need it for my Dustin blood sugar. Dustin got so pissed. Yeah, oh, I need it for man. my blood sugar. my diabetes. 
that's amazing. It's funny that you uh, you bring that up, Kyle, because like, um, so like I I'm in the film industry, so like if I'm running oh, sets, too, like dude. I'm work. Oh, we're dude, hell yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah. It, it it feels like the same thing. Like the first day, it's like almost never goes right, and you're just like, man, like these are like, especially if there's like really important scenes that you have to do. It'd be like, man, I I wish we could redo these because I you know I might know a couple people or like if it's my set and I've I've gotten to handpick like my crew and stuff i have an idea but there's always like you know maybe you don't know the actors maybe you don't know like some of the other crew it's a different location so like getting that stride is is definitely and then like when at least for me it's like when i feel like i'm at the top of my game is when it's already done so then i'm like well fuck man like where was this Mm -hmm. you know four or five days ago exactly so i yeah squash squash that quickly so that's that's my goal. I'm going to drag the guys with me. And it's like, let's go meet Fuming Mouth. And then go hang out. <laughs> yeah. so they go hang out with their merch people, too. And oh, like yeah. it, it, it be, meet everyone in the band. So for us, we don't have the cash to, to have a merch dude or a sound. More importantly, a sound guy. So I am our de facto sound guy. Like my mm-hmm. rack has the, the our Behringer X32, which has got the in-ear monitors. And everyone plugs into that rack. So I have to be the I have to be the one who's closest to the sound guy at all times. <clears throat> so I, I'm gonna have to beeline right after I meet Fuming Mouth, go right to ABR sound guy and be like, "Hey man, uh, tell yeah, me everything right. you know." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, let's also we, we have like the nicest drummer on the face of the planet. So I'm pretty sure <laughs> that he's gonna be a gravitational pull on tour. But this unless you really say drama. unless you say he's from norway <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah really he's not from fucking norway <laughs> get that fucking yeah we, we should say that yeah our drummer ramon Rellum, um he's uh he's from the netherlands and so the the inside joke is always like i'm not from fucking, fucking norway <laughs> but uh he's been great with us man um fucking super grateful to have him we have some extreme drums behind us and he's he's the guy for the job so <clears throat> and now he's uh you'll see in our in our new song in our new video like he sings too and he's a hell of a singer while he's yeah. playing this crazy shit so uh he's and when we were playing weapon. live yeah when we were playing live it was like everyone that that uh or all my music friends that that saw the videos or that were there they were like damn you guys are harmonizing like <laughs> playing vocals live with the drummer and i was like yeah man it, it takes the production to a whole nother level when we do so like Kyle was saying, it's our secret weapon. It's a huge, huge thing to have for us uh, that I didn't really think about until we were up there using it, you know? Yeah, and he's but, doing it with songs that were already on the EP. So like Revolver, for example, he's doing the harmonies on that, oh, which are wow. didn't exist. Like So there are some slight harmonies on the actual recording, but right. Ramon, what he's doing, it, it's different. So he's It's like his across. own part that he added to it, really, you know? Yeah, he's kind of he's kind of like a cross between Maynard from Tool, Fergie, and Jesus. <laughs> I love that. What a I just y'all can hear is that he's, right he's just up here <laughs> watching himself. His form up yeah. is I think you really part. nailed that one on the cross there, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> I just wish y'all could hear his warm up, dude. His his warm up is funny. Me 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 me. <laughs> 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 but he, whatever whatever he's doing it works and he's he really like dan said he's a sweet he's the sweetest dude ever and yeah. i I, yeah, I, I think that we're i think we're really lucky to have him and then watching him play bass blast beats he just looks so bored like yeah. <laughs> the hardest <laughs> thing ever he's just like mailing it in you're like what the fuck dude yeah he really does not think about the crazy like fast parts it's it, it's almost like his brain just turns off he doesn't have to think about it it's it's weird uh, but it's when he transcends awesome. into the. <laughs> yeah, he becomes a nor. Yeah, he becomes a. Uh, we call him humongous. You know, a Death Metal God. Yeah. His name is Humongous Romungus. So let's make sure. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what we yeah. call him in group chat. <laughs> humongous Romungus. I love that. Uh, you guys mentioned the new song. We do want to talk about this new song coming yes, out. Yes, yes. Uh, it's going to be a new single and a music video. Uh, so talk mm-hmm. about the song first, then we'll get to the music video. Kyle, I'll you take this. Okay, right. so uh, remember earlier when I was saying that you know, depend like sometimes you write a whole song, you know, separately and then give it to the guys. This was one of those. I I stayed up all night 
and it just like ideas kept coming. And I, I showed the guys the very next morning. I hadn't slept at all. And it was actually a, a day of rehearsal. Am I, am I right, guys? I think uh, so. Maybe so. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they all loved it. There are, th- there are quite a few things that have changed since then. Like I said, it was like 80 or 90% of the way done. And Jeremy added some. Uh, Jeremy's really good at adding like, atmospheric leads. I, I never think of those. And he added that. And we kind of sat on it for, uh, let's see, that was May 2023. Shit, like a year, man. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then we okay. recorded it with the same, the same <laughs> guy, uh, Pat Snyder, who basically he's like the, the, the unofficial six member of our band. And he, he, he's the dude that we go to like, if we, Jeremy and I have ideas, we send them to him. He's like, Oh, that sucks. That's really good. And he's <laughs> one of those people that it's good to have that like outside input where sometimes it hurts your feelings, but he's ultimately going to make the song better. So when we went to him with chasm, he's like, yeah, let's record it. And then also like Jeremy said before, this is the first one where Ramon's singing and uh, I don't know, super proud of it. So Justin, I'm looking at my phone, Justin, what he says, as far as the song itself, I guess it could be open to interpretation, but I wrote it thinking about just my own personal struggles with being present and good in my relationship with my wife. I'm not very good at being a good companion sometimes or even romantic. And I have these robotic tendencies that have always plagued my relationships with women. Some of the lyrics can be interpreted about anxiety too. take what you will from it, but it's about being you know, more present. Mm. Okay. I like that. And and let's, let's not forget, I almost had a vocal debut until I ruined it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah. How did you ruin it? What happened? He did I'm not ruin it. Man. Man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's just his scream just wasn't matching the melodic part. It was supposed to be like a backup screen, and, and, and Dan yeah, yeah, screams like nice a motherfucking dude. man. You know, it's it just wasn't very uh, hardcore. Like, it's very, like, very caveman like, stuff. Like, <laughs> It like, was, what's up, motherfuckers? Get the fuck back. Yeah. Get the fuck up. Time, we had yeah, a bank full of Dave's yeah. doubles, and then it just fucked my voice up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> nah, you we, weren't, uh, you weren't, it wasn't your performance, man. You you know that. He's just, know. he's talking shit. You're it was funny. No, no it was Jesus, so it's, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah, dude. Yeah, we, we had a lot of laughs, <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, yeah. I could just see like you guys about to go on stage and like y'all are just looking dead at Dan and be like, don't get on that mic. <laughs> don't, do do that get on that don't do it. Mic. Don't do it. Uh, do I love it, dude. I yeah. would love it. I'll, I'll leg him on, dude. Get out there. I'm, like, oh. <laughs> I'm just imagining are, the, we, the, we, the sunglasses <laughs> face. <laughs> doing gang vocals. People are like, who's oh, this yeah. guy? He's the only one doing the gang vocals. Like, this yeah. guy is amazing, dude. That would that would really catch everyone off guard if you did. Such- <laughs> you, you can be the West Borland of the group. Oh, there we man. go, dude. Talk to me, man. Talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> that, dude, that's your spot. Well, we steal this from always all the time, but we want to roll out the red carpet. We want y'all to promote what's coming up. Uh, so let the fans know. Uh, clearly, there's a tour coming up, and then we got new music and music video. So plug that away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you want me to get this? Uh, yeah. I got the dates pulled up right here. So, uh, yeah, so we've got May 10th, Birmingham, Alabama, Iron City. Then May 11th, Dothan, Alabama, The Plant. That's actually a really cool venue. I can't wait to be at it. It's like an old Coca-Cola uh, factory that they turned into a venue. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, that's that's what's up. Yeah, then we've got uh, May 13th, Columbia, South Carolina this at the Senate. Then we have the next day, May 14th, Lexington, Kentucky, Manchester Music Hall. May 15th is our last date on the run, Chattanooga, Tennessee at The Signal. So, right. yes, go go see Sunmancer with August Burns Red, Fuming Mouth. That yes. show, I, I'm actually really pissed that it's not coming anywhere close to either of us because that's going to be a fucking great show for sure. Hell yeah. Anyone that is not familiar with Sunmancer, you are now because they fucking rock. Uh, last Thanks, thing, man. like how, how can like socials, is it, is it just all Sunmancer where, like where are you guys at? So people so can, our, our, yeah, our, our main is, is Instagram and then Spotify. Uh, we're, we're trying to build up a little bit of following on TikTok. It's just not, 
they, it, we're, we're not uh, a TikTok style of band, but yeah, Instagram, Spotify. Yeah, Those that's all just at, at Sunmancer. Yeah, same with Facebook. But yeah, Instagram, Spotify, yeah. Go get those streams up. Come sure we, us. We could Come dance with us. Plus this podcast <laughs> on TikTok, and it'd be funny. <laughs> well, we, we've <laughs> yeah. got one. We, we do do that, that, yeah. yeah. Nice, Manage nice. is a loose term, but it's there. <laughs> well, yeah, too old TikTok, TikTok yeah. is so fickle. Yeah, man. It, it's, it's so Instagram is so... Like we'll, you know uh, what you're gonna get. We'll hashtag ICP yeah. and it'll really take it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait until like we'll we'll talk to you guys after the tour and be like, you guys will never believe how many juggalos were at each show. Be like, well, no, we're actually pretty. <laughs> that, that makes they're, sense. They're, they're actually called juggalos, but you know, <laughs> my bad. Uh, we're gonna, yeah, we're we're gonna invent that new term, juggalos. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love it, dude. That's a, that's a merch right. item right there. The that's yes, right. yes, yeah, dude. Yeah, Where my yeah. juggalos. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> Damn stupid face on it. <laughs> just blown up. It's just a very pixelated. So With the sunglasses. <laughs> That's right. Oh Thomas, my god, this is great. You guys are good hosts. Thanks for oh, having. We appreciate uh, that. Yo. Thank you for real, this has been a for heat. coming on. This has but, been an absolute before pleasure. We end it, uh, please say the, the the new song name. I don't think we ever. Are you waiting for <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. This, this, the, the new song is called Chasm Darkly, and it's about dancing. Yeah. Come That's dance right. with us. Come <laughs> dance with us. Being in the moment and dancing. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. Be, yep. Being present in the moment and dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Let's roll that shit. Chasm Darkly, Sunmancer, catch them on tour, stream their shit. They are doing amazing things. It's been a pleasure, boys. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, man. Absolutely. Absolutely.